good if they were in a foreign territory? That is a possible consideration. In my mind, it was a way for them to just create an environment, a corporate law, corporate structure environment, as Ken said, with resolutions that would allow for them to give this dog and pony show, which they continue to do between CNN and Fox News, to forward the same agenda. Their agenda is so clear. Let's steal, let's rob, let's rape, let's pillage, and act as immoral as we can along the way. And let's tell people how good of a job we've done it done for them on Fox and CNN. Let's tell them without us, they would be nothing. Without us raising the debt ceiling, we, we would be saving them from years and years of destruction. What they're forgetting to say is that their bad decisions from the mid-1800s have put us into this place. This isn't meant to be a town or phone call. This isn't meant to be anything other than a factual presentation of what has happened over the last 150 years. But I want people to be clear about one thing. We are not a corporation. We are not an organization under a rule of government, well, like the like a LLC or a uh, uh, an Inc or a Corp. Um, we are, if you want, the lawful. It is your government that re-inhabited and got thousands of people together across this country, voted on our Senate, voted on our House, and we went to Utah. And we sat back down in those seats that were left in 1861. We literally did something that no other nation has ever done other than Israel. That gives you the opportunity to be a part of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I'm going to tell you right now, we've had in-depth conversations about the Constitution and why people don't have constitutional protection within the court of law. The court of law is just another act. It's another presentation of authority. It is literally a vessel. Every court is literally its own corporate vessel. It has a tax ID number. It is for profit, and that judge is on the take. I don't care how you line it up. Every case is bonded. Every case is insured. And every case is worth millions. That is why in our country we have 3 million published prisoners. I think it's more. And that's why with 350 million people in our country and 3 million people in prison, we have the largest prison population of any country on the face of the earth. Compared to, now remember, we tout freedom. Compared to communist China, those bad guys who have a billion to one million two hundred million people, and they have 1.2 million prisoners. Those bad guys that have four times as many people have a third of our prison population. Statutes, licenses, ordinances are necessary in a very small proportionate scale to what we currently have, like maybe one, two, three percent. I don't know what the stats are going to be. I know we shouldn't have people speeding down highways. I know we shouldn't have drunk drivers. We as the Republic for the United States are going to be addressing these things. We have given constructive notice to the world that we are back. We invite you to be a part of the Republic for the United States of America. We invite you to join your specific state republic, but not wait for something to happen. Not wait and watch, but to be a part, to set your personal time aside, and to serve something way greater than you will ever be a part of on anything else. I can't even begin to tell you how proud I am to say I'm a member of this republic. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude the call this evening. If uh, my co-hosts have any other final comments, please uh, come forth now. Yeah. I just wanted to add a couple of key things. 
You, you mentioned the District of Columbia and the incorporation of that, and how does that tie to the United States? Well, if we go back to the original Constitution, the lawfully assigned jurisdiction for the United States as the federal government was to be a 10 square, 10 mile square uh, area to be derived from one or more, from territory from one or more states, and then other very limited specific uh, elements that were able to be ceded lawfully and properly as territory to the United States. The key is contract and jurisdiction. When the District of Columbia was created by that act and what is called or referred to as a municipal corporation was established, then it doesn't have to overtly say because obviously they don't want it to be overt. But it was in fact and in function uh, when the inhabitant and the domicile or the, the house and the person who lives in that house basically are one in the same, then, then they are defined as one in the same. So the municipal corporation of District of Columbia and the United States are essentially in function of fused, and that's been the case by acts and deeds and statutes and codes for 140 years. Uh, it's beyond question the fact that Title 28, Section 3002, Subsection 15 says the United States is a federal corporation. I mean, how much more clear can we get? Uh, where does that corporation live? It lives in the United States. The key is the design was to turn everything upside down and inside out so that that we were all attached by contract and jurisdiction to that corporation or that municipal entity so that we can be acted upon and presumed to be in consent, to be part of it, and to be pledged as that, that uh, surety collateral and all the rest of it. And I'll leave you with... One last thought. There's a quote from Franklin Roosevelt, and it goes, or he said, nothing in history happens by accident. Therefore, if you think all of this was random events, if you think 911 was a random event, and the Patriot Act and the creation of Homeland Security, these things, when you get an eagle's eye view of history as we have endeavored to provide for you and we've been endeavoring to attain for ourselves over the years, you see the integration of the plan and the template. The Federal Reserve Act, as Kelby mentioned, was passed in late 1913, and it established it for 99 years to end next year. The idea was that the Federal Reserve and the system would put the United States into bankruptcy, gather everything up, attach it by contract, consent, and jurisdiction, and then allow it to be liquidated, and the creditors would take it uh, perpetually. There's a lot of reasons for that or why, but we won't go into it. But the point is that all of this is a dog and pony show. It's a script that was pre-written many centuries ago, and we are living it. But the key is that we have free will and a free moral agency to not consent. And that is what we've done. That's simply all we've done. We do not consent to it. Because if you do not consent, then a fraudulent contract is null and void. And all those contracts and presumptions of attachment to that jurisdiction really becomes null and void. And I believe firmly that the reason this corporation is imploding on itself is because many people have withdrawn their consent, their commercial consent, their contractual consent, and their spiritual consent. And by virtue of that, it is losing the feeding trough to maintain it. So for every man or woman who steps into the Republic, that's one less living spiritual being in a body on planet Earth who has withdrawn that energetic consent and one less feeding trough that it can feed off of. And at a certain point, it will tip. And I think we're very close and the world is supporting us. So once again, people, just come on in. I agree with you, uh, Kelby. Uh, I am thoroughly excited every day to say that I am part of this republic, and I hope the people listening really get that and can see the value of what we're saying and step in and withdraw that consent. So you all have a good night, and I yield the floor. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Robert, please uh, take a minute and close us out in prayer. Thanks, Kobe. 
Yeah, I would just like to uh, encourage uh, all of our listeners to uh, be mindful. We are uh, at a turning point in our nation, and uh, it's it's prudent to have uh, yourself uh, and your family uh, provided for. So, uh, you know, really good to put aside a few things, uh, some water and some canned goods or just stuff for a transition. You know, it's uh, don't be surprised if uh, life doesn't all go smoothly as we move into this next season. Uh, I'm, sadly, we have a money system that simply cannot mathematically survive and cannot physically survive. Uh, it's imploding upon itself. And uh, the good news is what we are doing in the Republic is we are here to catch the fall or to be the solution when the fall happens. So just prepare yourselves, be prudent about that, uh, pray about that, uh, strengthen ties in your church and in your community so that you know one another. Don't be going so fast in a thousand direction that you don't have uh, folks who you can uh, count on and lean on and, and share with. So um, you know, some of the basic community principles, are, they're key. They're key for us to uh, re rekindle those and strengthen those in our, in our uh, uh, fast-paced society. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. We thank you. We thank you for laying out the uh, the agenda of the blueprint of, of those who have taken our freedom. We thank you, Lord, that you have uh, that you labor with us. We see your systematic hand upon our efforts. We're humbled that you would choose us to uh, to fulfill aspects of your will. Lord, uh, it's said in your Word constantly that uh, the things that are done in secret will be made known. And these things are being made known from Lincoln to Wilson to FDR to what those administrations have done to, to turn the tide, to, uh, to gradually take away uh, that representative form of government that you call for in your word. Lord, help us to uh, see the connections between your word and uh, what is the true God government, the true people's government, the true government that you desired and longed for Israel through the years. Help us, Lord, see the connections and see how our founders truly were men of vision and that we are asked to take that torch. The harvest is great. The laborers are few. Lord, send laborers to us here in the Republic that we may continue to finish strong for your name, for your glory, for your praise. For, Lord, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whatever religion, whatever belief system we all come from, God is faithful to draw us to his heart. So as we seek you, Lord, with all of our heart and our soul and our mind, we thank you that you have a destiny, a future, and a hope for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.